Because it falls on a Sunday, we don't celebrate that feast liturgically, and yet it's fitting for us to recognize it and to constantly look to Mary, the mother of God and our mother, to grow in our devotion to her, to seek her intercession so we might always grow closer to her son. Mary loves us, again, as a mother loves her children, and she teaches us so many things, and I think the one thing to which our Gospels refer and which she exhibits for us is a need for all of us to have an undivided heart that we are called to, in our journey of faith, allow our hearts to be transformed by God's grace to become more and more like her immaculate heart, to love God first and foremost and always. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. <laughs> These are stark words. Aren't we supposed to love our parents and our spouse and our children? Certainly we are. So what does our Lord mean by these words? I would propose the answer is again found in that image of the undivided heart, that our love of God must be the first love that we have, that all our relationships, all the blessings that are ours, the gifts that we have, we must always remember that they flow from his love, and that everything is meant to then direct us back to our ever-deepening experience of that love. That's why the gospel, I think, concludes with this warning that any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. It seems almost a little out of place, but we all know that our possessions, the things we have, our relationships, we love them, and whatever they are, and they are good, but we can so easily become attached to them. You and I gather here each weekend in this Holy Eucharist so that we can be more fully attached to Christ as we encounter Him, as we receive Him in this Eucharist. We're meant to be consumed by His love to then, yes, enjoy and accept with great gratitude, all those possessions and things that are ours, but also to accept with great joy when those things will no longer be. They will end as all things will end ultimately in death. To see that there is only one possession that is meant to endure for all of eternity, and that is our being possessed by the Lord the sacramental communion that we receive, our union with Christ is meant to define our very identity. And so each day we're meant to live out that identity more fully in our love of Him and of one another. Do we desire to be His disciple? If so, it is made clear by our Lord in today's gospel that it requires us that we carry the crosses that are ours and follow Him more and more each day. And yet we need wisdom and strength to do that. In our first reading from the Book of Wisdom, we hear that our human deliberations are timid and unsure because of original sin, our ability to see things clearly and then to act with courage and clarity has been impaired. And so we need that wisdom and strength to choose the good and to avoid evil. It's this insight that has always animated St. Paul. In our second reading, he writes to Philemon, urging him to accept the returning slave Onesimus, not with harsh punishment for leaving him, but with forgiveness and love, taking him back not as a slave, but as a brother. And so with Philemon, our desire to follow Christ, it must be expressed in those concrete actions of our daily living. For most of us, it won't be in any extraordinary achievement. But again, in just those normal, and daily activities that are constantly presented to us. Mary, when she was that young girl addressed by the angel at the Annunciation, was basically asked to renounce all of her possessions, 
to renounce all of her preconceived ideas about how her life was to turn out, to renounce any fear and uncertainty that might have tempted her, to renounce that self-concern and self-interest that can so easily dominate us. And she simply said yes to God. Her heart was never torn between her will and God's will since her will was God's will. As we recall the day of her birth, let us pray to her that our hearts might become more like hers to be more faithful disciples of her Son who is our Savior and our Lord, to know the sublime riches of life in Christ which are infinitely greater and more valuable than anything ever could be, to live this communion that we celebrate with an undivided heart, always striving to love him more and more each day so that we might then be filled more and more each day with his love, his joy, and his peace.